The solar industry going through some upheaval. There are lessons they can learn from even the great Steve Jobs. Liam Denning is here with this story. Hey, man, what's going on? Good morning. So tell us about the solar industry. Uh, going through some rough times, right? Not so sunny in the solar industry, no, is it? No, and I haven't heard that one before. So. <laughs> I, I just came up with that uh, one. You can, um, you can use it if you'd thanks, like. Thanks, thanks, yeah. Maya. Cheers. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been a bad year. Uh, so the industry... Uh, solar stocks are down about 75% over mm -hmm. the past year. Uh, last week, Q-Cells, which was one of the big, uh, in fact, I think it used to be the biggest German um, solar power company, uh, solar power manufacturer, went bankrupt. Um, you know, First Solar, which is the, uh, you know, was worth north of 20 billion in 2008, is now worth less than 2 billion. It stopped, uh, slid last week. So uh, the big problem they're having is that you know, this industry really grew up on subsidies, government mm -hmm. subsidies. And, you know, one of the reasons, for example, you had big companies in Germany, even though Germany is not exactly a tropical paradise, right. is that, um, you know, there were so many government subsidies, it made sense to just pile in there and, and manufacture and install these systems. Um, and now, you know, governments are not so uh, pleased about handing out those subsidies. Um, they've been scaling them back. But at the same time, all those subsidies attracted a lot of competition. And I think what the solar industry and its investors are discovering now is that if you look back a few years, these companies were valued very much like high-tech stocks. I mean, back in 2008, First Solar's stock was trading at a P-E ratio north of 100. Um, now it's down around, you know, five or six. Um, I think what they're working out is that actually, you know, this industry isn't really a high-tech industry because the technology is kind of well-known. It's, it's well-developed. Um, you know, this is not exactly cutting-edge stuff anymore. And it's really a manufacturing industry. And the fact is lots of Chinese competitors have come in. They've built loads of capacity to build this thing. And so prices have just been crashing and, and, and this, crashing. And this crashing. gets to what you were talking about. Sort of, there, there's, there's something to be said for being the first mover, being someone right. to come up with something. Right. But then you know you have to watch out because someone's going to come and eat your lunch right and you've seen it a number of times mm -hmm. in the tech industry yeah and so the analogy i drew is with uh, the mouse and, and there's a very famous story in silicon valley about a very young steve jobs going to xerox's park facility which was like their you know their kind of ideas lab mm -hmm. uh, and seeing this very clunky uh mouse device that they'd built i think at the time it cost like 300 dollars he went back to his people at Apple and said, we need to make a version of this that costs like $15 and will become ubiquitous. And lo and behold, it did, but Xerox didn't really benefit from that. Right. Um, and I think we're gonna see that with uh, the, the solar, solar power industry. industry. You've had a, an industry that, as I said, that's grown up on subsidies. Those subsidies are now going away. And what it's really gonna be about from now on is who's got the scale and the balance sheet to ride out the inevitable cyclical ups and downs right. you're going to get in this industry and cope with very low prices. Right. And that's where we have to leave it. Thank you very Thanks much, Liam Denning.